In December 2019, I went to Oxford to interview for engineering. Oxford interviews are notoriously tricky, but what are they really like, and can you prepare for them? My name is Sam, and this is Oxcentric. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my own interview experiences and giving some advice about how to succeed in this part of the application process. If you're applying in 2020, interviews will be entirely online, so you'll likely have a very different experience to what I had. Despite this, most of my suggestions will still be valid. Without further ado, let's get started. Part 1. Pre-interview. The interview is the final step in Oxford's application process. For engineering, around 1 in 3 applicants are invited to interview. The department decides who to shortlist based on a candidate's physics aptitude test score and UCAS form, which includes their predicted grades, personal statement and teacher reference. I was quite happy with my personal statement and UCAS form overall, so I was quite optimistic about getting an interview. However, I thought I'd flopped on the PAT, so I was still pretty nervous. I remember I was in the library when I received my invite. The email itself didn't actually tell me whether I'd got an interview or not, so I had this excruciating 10 second wait for the attached letter to load. It was not fun. You've got mail. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Please load. Please load. Oh no, instead, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Why? That's not too bad. I was invited to interview just over two weeks before I was due to be in Oxford. I got to and from Oxford by train, which was relatively hassle-free. The train station is conveniently within 30 minutes walk of all undergraduate colleges, and for most is less than 20 minutes. If you're planning on driving to your interviews, be aware that city centre parking in Oxford is quite confusing and expensive, so public transport might be a better idea. Part 2. In Oxford. I arrived in Oxford in the afternoon, then headed straight to my college. Some Oxford interviews last for up to three days, however the engineering interviews are only one day. On this day, you have two interviews, one at your first choice college, and another at a randomly allocated second college. Most applicants stay overnight at their college before the day of their interview. This is a great chance to experience Oxford life, including having dinner in hall and seeing some of the sights. As soon as I arrived, I was shown to my room by a student mentor and given a chance to settle in before dinner. I mostly use this time to go through some practice problems and revise my personal statement because I am the CEO of Last Minute Preparation. Breakfast, lunch and dinner are provided to interviewees for free and, in my opinion, the whole food is really nice. Meals can also be a great opportunity to try and socialise with new people. I found everyone was very friendly and talkative despite the high pressure situation. Now, I'm not exactly a maverick conversationalist, but I ended up talking to someone else from Manchester who then introduced me to others applying for their course. After offers came out, it was really neat to discover that some of the people I talked to on interviews had also been successful, and it definitely made me feel less nervous about starting. That evening, I also met up with some friends from my sixth form for ice cream. They'd already finished their interviews and were quite happy with how they'd gone, so that was reassuring to hear. I got back to my room at around 9pm and tried to relax before bed to ensure I got the best sleep possible. Then, there was nothing to do but wait. Part 3. Interview Day. At last, it was the day itself the final part of my Oxford application. I woke up relatively early and read through my notes before breakfast in hall. I did wear a suit for my interviews, mostly because I was used to wearing one every day at sixth form, though the majority of people just dress smart casual. Primarily, I'd recommend wearing something you feel comfortable in so you are as relaxed as possible. After squeezing in a final few problems to get my mind properly engaged, I went into my first interview. This was the harder of the two interviews, but I was still pleased with my performance. We worked through three mixed maths and physics questions, which increased in complexity as the interview went on. Following my first interview, I went back to my room and carried on with engineering problems. Then, straight after lunch, I was taken to another college where I had my second interview. This interview consisted of some quizzing on my personal statement before one maths and one physics problem, which I worked through with the tutors. After this concluded, I was free to go as engineers are never called for additional interviews. It was around 4pm when I got back to my college to grab my bags and dash off in the hopes of catching an earlier train. Personally, I thought that the interviews themselves were less stressful and more relaxed than I anticipated, despite some thought-provoking questions. I had hoped they would be a success, and overall, I felt they were. Part 4. The Interview Format Candidates for engineering have two interviews of around 25 to 35 minutes length. You can expect nearly all the time to be spent on maths and physics problems. Generally, interviews are conducted by two tutors. Sometimes one will write notes whilst the other works through the problem with you, but this may vary. You may have some introductory questions to help you warm up, such as why you want to study engineering, though these are less important than the problems you will tackle. Some colleges involve your personal statement in the interview, so make sure you're refreshed on this before you come to Oxford. At the end of the interview, the tutors may ask you if you have any questions. 
Some people worry that they must ask a question, though I would suggest only asking one if you are genuinely curious about something and couldn't find the answer easily online. The purpose of an interview is to see how you respond to the tutorial system of Oxford and if you would be an engaging student to work with. It tests how you respond to and analyse the information so a tutor understands how you structure your approach to a problem. Tutors also wish to understand your interest, which we evidence by a broad knowledge of the subject. If you are en route to a solution, the tutors may suggest a different method to see how you respond. If this happens, don't panic and try the new strategy. They'll help you if you get stuck. Part 5. Practice Now, let's talk practice. Generally, there are a few skills which an engineering interview is likely to test that you should be prepared for. Graph sketching, approximation and diagram drawing often appear. These are best practiced by choosing examples to work through, then check. Trying as many questions as possible is the best way to prepare for an engineering interview. I'd recommend three main resources for this. Firstly, I want to study engineering as a fantastic free website with a wide range of interview style questions, from classic puzzles to unique engineering problems. These also include work solutions, which makes it easy to check your answers and get hints if you need them. I personally completed all of the over 200 interview style problems before I got to Oxford, which helped me feel much more confident and prepared. And let me tell you, few things compared to the thrill of finishing that final problem is just amazing. Secondly, Professor Povey's Perplexing Problems is a very useful book written by a current Oxford engineering tutor that contains puzzles extremely similar in style to real Oxford interview questions. The problems are rated by difficulty and cover many areas of engineering. I really like how it encourages you to play around with the questions and investigate alternate methods, which is exactly the kind of lateral thinking an interview tests. Finally, the physics lab problems are quirky and quick questions that focus on applying physical concepts. These are good to get you thinking about unusual situations, but are less mathematical than the questions you might face in an interview. To maximise the effectiveness of practice, it might help you to talk aloud so you get used to speaking through your ideas in real time. Outside of working through questions on your own, there are also other helpful forms of preparation. Mock interviews are very useful practice. Oxford's academic style of engineering is quite different to the more practical type offered in many schools, so your maths or physics teachers are probably the best people to conduct one. You can also practice working through problems with classmates or someone else to get you used to another person's input. Lastly, I'd recommend revising your personal statement before the interview, as this could come up. Ultimately, speaking through your thought process is the key skill being tested. Learning to never say I don't know or just stay silent is essential. Even if you're explaining an option you've just ruled out, it gives the tutor something to bounce off and further guide you towards the solution. Part 6. Tips In my opinion, the hardest part about interviews is knowing how to prepare, but let's quickly talk about some other essential tips. Firstly, don't forget about the basics of logistics like reading your information pack and taking note of any key points like gate codes and meal times. Getting locked out is not an ideal way to de-stress during interviews. Personally, I remember turning up at an interview without letting my student help us know, like the information pack said to. About five minutes before, I got a very panicked phone call asking where I was, which was pretty awkward. Secondly, try to self-care. Be sure to eat properly, as there's nothing worse than going into an interview hungry, and get the best sleep possible so you feel energised. Thirdly, keep your brain in gear. If you're an engineer, you'll only have a few hours between the two interviews. I found it helpful to do some more practice in this time to ensure I remained fully focused on the problem solving. Lastly, some general advice from my application. Any time you spend worrying, you could spend studying. I know, that is a depressing motto, but it is genuinely true. If your practice feels like hard work or a struggle, it's probably an indicator that you're studying the right things and improving yourself. Don't feel ashamed if you get stuck and have to seek support. This is totally normal and will help you learn. Part 7. Conclusion I found my actual interviews went by very quickly. I was quite surprised both times when they told me that it was over. Once again, the interview does not make or break an application. Many successful applicants feel that theirs went badly. Don't forget that getting a problem correct or struggling yet persevering can equally demonstrate the potential that tutors are hoping to find. There'll be links to more resources in the description. If you are currently preparing for interviews, I hope this demystifies the process a little and I wish you the best of luck. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content.